Well, hello there. Last week, I showed you guys how to print things in half the time using vase mode only with no infill and no support and still get something fairly strong. What I didn't show you was exactly how I modeled this up. That's what this video is all about. Here's the deal, is this helmet doesn't take much time to print at all. It's a pretty simple model to do. So what I'm gonna do is show you how to do the computer-aided design on this. I'm gonna show you an Onshape. It's my preferred CAD, but anybody who uses any 3D modeler should be able to get what they need to know from this by just watching and following along. If you haven't seen my last video, check it out. It's a quick watch and it'll show you the basics of this concept. All the models for this, you will be able to download from my Patreon page and you'll be able to see the link down below. Okay, let's get started, shall we? What we have here is the helmet that I've modeled up. And what we're gonna look at here is just the model itself. And I've split it up into two pieces. I can print off the top piece and then I'll print off the nose piece. Again, that's gonna have all the ribs and everything in it. Just well, follow along and you'll see. That all being said is you'll notice that this doesn't have any rivets in it. And there's a really good reason for that is, is rivets don't take much time to glue on, but they're a pain in the butt to sand around. So I made everything nice and flat so you can sand and scrape and do all those things that you need to, to get the surface nice and smooth. And then you glue the rivets down. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is we're just gonna do a show and tell. Let's start at the beginning. First thing I do is I'll bring in a 3D model of my head. And the reason why I do that is so I can make sure things fit. I can print things off almost perfectly every time. It doesn't really happen that way, but you know, I even lie to myself to make myself feel better about it. But I have got better odds. I figure about two thirds of the time, I have things that fit. The other third, eh just get pissed off at myself. One of the first things I'll do is create a profile of what I want the helmet to be, right? This will be just sort of like a rough idea. There's sketch two and then the arc that I want to have around my head. So this is based off of an oval that if we look at the top of my head, I'll do an oval that kind of crests around, make sure I've got lots of room. In this case, I messed up and that helmet's pretty tight, but that's because I added the chain mail to the inside. But, doesn't matter, back on the topic. What I'd end up doing is, is I take two of those lines from the first sketch and the second sketch and I loft them over. Now, these helmets have sort of sharp ridges. When you were a blacksmith back then, it was really hard to make things nice and round. You could do it, but it would take a lot of time. So what they ended up doing is make things, so you get a seam, you make an aesthetic, and I think it actually creates a bit of a rib, which makes the helmet a little stronger. So the next thing I do is I'll make it thicker. And that thickness piece, doo -doo -doo, you can see here, aha, oh, I found my problem. So the reason why my helmet's tight is because I had this thickness go in, not out. The, the sad thing is, is that there's a lot of people out there that think I'm a pro at this and I make dumb mistakes just like everybody else. I just make them faster and clean them up faster. That's all. Then what I ended up doing is I wanted the ridge right along here. So I created a split line, created a line and split that surface. And then I moved that face out just a little bit just to create that little rib. And you can see I created another rib right along there for the forward piece. Another split line, get that piece. Now, one thing you might have to do before you mirror everything is trim things out so that they're nice and flat. So let's just get everything mirrored out. We're just going to go here and we're going to hide all those sketches. We don't need to see my big dumb head. And it is dumb. Reference the beginning of the video where I admitted I screwed up. We'll go through all this and like, you know, how I modified or how I made the nose. Again, it, it doesn't mean that much. So we're, let's just keep going until we got the nose piece. So now we've got the nose piece. Here is where things get interesting. Right here, you're going to see an offset surface. Now what this offset surface is, I'm gonna hide the nose guard and I'm also gonna hide the helmet. Let's show this offset surface. Now, what is this offset surface from? Well, it comes from the helmet, but you don't see it when I turn it on. And the reason why is, is that, it, remember in the last video, I said that if you wanna make these ribs, you have to take half the diameter of the nozzle that you're printing with, and you're gonna use that number to make sure that all the gaps between 
everything is going to have to be that. So in this case, I'm using a 0.8 nozzle. I'm offsetting the surface 0.4 millimeters, right? So we've got that offset surface. Then what I do is I create a plane or basically a cutting face like that. And we're going to hide the helmet again. So we've got the cutting face and we got this, this surface. And you'll notice another thing too is there's a little bit of a gap from the bottom from there to there. And that is about a millimeter. And you're going to go, Ben, you said earlier that 0.4 was the magic number. And yes, it is. But this is the bottom face. So what I try to do is, is that I try to print enough layers that I get one millimeter of base. And that is where that number comes from. It's just to get enough layers on the base of the, the helmet to be structurally strong. Now I'm going to take that plane and I'm going to create a circular pattern. And that's going to be the basis of all these ribs. And there's a magic thing that happens right here in this split. So I do a split and basically I'm taking each one of these planes and I'm splitting it with that surface that I made earlier, that 0.4 offset. And what we do is we delete all the extra stuff. I know that a lot of you are thinking I can model this faster and my method will be better and that's great. Show me a really quick method. I totally want to see it, but in the end, this is the way I do it. So just keep the spam comments down. Like really, it's just the way I work. You will notice that there is one here that I didn't clip down. In that last video, you noticed that the reason why I can make it vase mode is, is that there's always a way for it to go around from the inside to the back. And that requires a slot, not a like a complete cut through. So then we'll do a boolean. With the boolean, you can see that cut all the way through. And you can see here, there's a little bit of that slot. This is the top of that one millimeter that I was mentioning before. That's just so you get a nice bottom piece. That can go all the way through if you really want it to. It's not that important. But let's take a look at the inside. We can see that Boolean had cut out all these little slots in the pieces. So you can see that everything's been cut. And those faces are 0.4 millimeters from the edge of the face. So using my printing method, where if you look straight down and you go around the full outside, you know what, I'm gonna slice this in Cura. So this is 10 hours and 13 minutes. Let's take a quick look at the preview. And we're gonna go down and, oh man, is that lovely. You'll notice that this guy prints off in vase mode and you're like, come on, seriously? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, seriously. Let's take a look at this. So it starts there, does each little rib is gonna come in around that back and then it's gonna go around the full outside. And it comes around to the back, shoots to the inside, and it's going to finish off all those little ribs until it ends up back at where it started. And then next layer. So no retractions, no travel moves, no infill. All those extraneous moves are removed from this. That model and all those other models that I make will be up in my Patreon where you can get them. Um, this is sort of like a tip jar so that I can continue on figuring this stuff out and hopefully making your life better. So you're probably wondering, what does the nose guard look like? And the modeling is similar, but different. So let's just take a quick look at the nose guard. Oh, one trick that I learned too, is that I put in alignment pins. And these alignment pins are the diameter of your filament. So you just cut off little chunks of your filament and you stuff them in these holes and it lines everything up. So when you glue it all together, it works incredibly well. We take this face, we offset it to the one side, to the inside 0.4 millimeters. And then what I ended up doing is I created a couple of sketches for where the ribs belong. So all I did with this sketch is I made sure that at that point to here is 0.4 millimeters, again, that magic distance. I roughed out where I thought the rib should be, one down the center and a couple off to the side, just to make sure it's strong. This is probably massive overkill, but that's fine. And you know, from there, I extrude it out and make it thicker and I cut those pieces, right? So there you go. That is how you can create the modeling technique that I use to print everything off in vase mode and save time. Why am I talking like this? Well, I'm a warrior. Mm, not really. Maybe a 3D printer warrior. I'm a nerd.
Now, remember, if you want the 3D files for this helmet that prints off in 12 hours, probably total, with a little bit of gluing, uh, you'll find that on my Patreon. Link is down below. Okay, so that is the sort of dirty, rough version of it. Again, um, whatever CAD package you use, I'm pretty sure you understand what was going on and will be able to do this. Uh, let me know what your results are. I, I'm really curious because I'm consistently halving the print time on pretty much anything that I'm building using this method. Um, yeah, it's it's making me super happy because I'm I'm getting some stuff done now. If you are a programmer that works at Cura or Simplify 3D or um, Prusa, whoever does this stuff, this has to be something that you can integrate in in your slicing is to make it sure that you look down on any single layer and be able to print it in vase mode. It will save people so much time. And really, I think it's a no brainer. So let's just make that happen. OK, thanks for watching this late. And um, yeah, talk to you in a bit.